Welcome to Chem Whiteboard. In this video, we will review and summarize acids and bases. Let's consider one of the most critical reactions in chemistry. The self-ionization of water molecules, or the auto-ionization of water. Here, one of the water molecules will gain a proton, and the other will lose a proton and ionize to produce a hydronium ion, H3O+, and a hydroxide ion, OH-. We can write an expression for the equilibrium using the equilibrium constant, capital K, and the concentrations of reactants and products. Equilibrium constant is given by the concentration of products over reactants. Here, on the reactant side, we have two water molecules, and on the product side, we have one hydronium ion and one hydroxide ion. Therefore, we get, equilibrium constant, capital K, is equal to the concentration of H3O+, plus, times the concentration of OH-, minus, over, the concentration of H2O, to the second power. However, we do not include solids and liquids in the equilibrium constant expressions. Therefore equilibrium constant, K, equals, hydronium ion concentration, times the concentration of hydroxide ions. Because we are talking about the ionization of water, we call this K sub W. At 25 degrees Celsius, the concentration values of hydronium and hydroxide ions have been experimentally determined, and equal to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7 molar, for pure water. Therefore the KW equals 10 to the power minus 7, times 10 to the power minus 7, equal to 10 to the power minus 14. Here, the curved arrows are called mechanistic arrows and represent the flow of electrons during chemical reactions, or how new bonds are formed and existing bonds are broken. Note that here we deal with concentration values that are really really small and have many decimal places. Therefore, to simplify, scientists have developed the pH scale, which refers to the negative log concentration values. For instance, let's consider a hypothetical substance, X. The P of X is the negative log of X concentration. Note that the inverse mathematical operation, or the anti-log value of negative PX, gives the concentration of X. For pure water at 25 degrees Celsius, the H3O plus concentration is 1 times 10 to the power minus 7. Therefore the pH equals, negative log of hydronium concentration, which is the negative log of 1 times 10 to the power minus 7. Thus, the pH is equal to 7. Now let's look at the relationship of pH, pOH, and pKW. KW is the product of hydronium ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. By taking the negative log values of both sides of the equation, we get, the negative log of H3O plus concentration, the negative log of OH minus concentration, is equal to the negative log of KW. Therefore, we can write, pH plus pOH equals pKW. At 25 degrees Celsius, pH plus pOH equal to 14. Some chemical substances react with water, and changes the concentrations of hydronium ions, or hydroxide ions, by either donating or accepting protons from water. These substances are called Bronsted-Lowry acids, or bases. An acid acts as a proton donor, denoted as HA, and transfers a proton to the water molecule, producing hydronium ions. Therefore, acids increase the hydronium ion concentration in water. Thus, the pH will be less than 7, at 25 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, a base acts as a proton acceptor, denoted as B, and gains a proton from water producing hydroxide ions. Therefore, bases increases the hydroxide ion concentration, and decrease the hydronium ion concentration in water. Thus, the pH will be greater than 7, at 25 degrees Celsius. Now let's consider the reaction of acids with water. The reaction of the hypothetical acid, HA, with water, establishes the following equilibrium. Here, the equilibrium constant, capital K, equals the concentration of hydronium ions, times the concentration of a minus, over the concentration of the acid. 
Because we are dealing with an acid dissociation, or ionization, we call this K sub A. The extent of the reaction between the acid and water is given by the strength of an acid. For a strong acid, the reaction is very much product favored. In other words, a strong acid completely dissociates to form products. Therefore, the concentration of products, hydronium ions and the A-, is much larger than the concentration of reactants, or the concentration of unreacted acids. Thus, the Ka will be larger than 1. Examples of strong acids are hydrochloric acid, HCl, nitric acid, HNO3, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. On the other hand, weak acids dissociates partially in aqueous solutions. In other words, these are reactant favored. Therefore, the concentrations of products are much smaller than the concentrations of the reactants for weak acids. Thus, the ionization constant, Ka, is less than 1. Examples for weak acids are carboxylic acids such as acetic acid, CH3COOH, and formic acid, HCOOH. Nitrous acid, HNO2, hydrocyanic acid, HCN, etc. Now let's consider the reaction of bases with water. The reaction of the hypothetical base, B, with water, establishes the following equilibrium. Here, the equilibrium constant, capital K, equals the concentration of, HB+, times the concentration of hydroxide ions, over the concentration of the base. Because we are dealing with a base dissociation, or ionization, we call this K sub B. The extent of the reaction between the base and water is given by the strength of a base. Strong bases completely dissociate in water. In other words, the reaction of a strong base with water is very much product favored. Therefore, the equilibrium constant or the ionization constant for the base, Kb, is greater than 1. These are usually ionic substances, that have hydroxide ions as the anion, and a group 1 element as the cation. Examples for strong bases are lithium hydroxide, LiOH, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, potassium hydroxide, KOH, etc. On the other hand, weak bases dissociate partially in aqueous solutions. In other words, the reaction of weak bases with water is reactant favored. Therefore, the concentration of products, HB plus and hydroxide ions, are much smaller than the reactants, the weak base. Thus the base ionization constant, Kb, is less than 1. A few examples for weak bases are ammonia, NH3, amines, denoted as, RNH2, copper hydroxide etc. Now let's take a moment to understand the conjugate pairs. An acid and a base that differs only by one proton, are called conjugate acid-base pairs. Whenever an acid donates a proton in water, a conjugate base is produced. Because, a minus, has basic properties, in other words, can accept a proton from water and increase the hydroxide ion concentration, we call this a conjugate base. Similarly, when a base reacts with water and accepts a proton, a conjugate acid is formed. We call this a conjugate acid, because HB plus can donate a proton in aqueous solutions and increase the hydronium ion concentration. Now let's look at the relationship between the of Ka and Kb for a given acid and its conjugate base. Consider, for example, the ionization of a hypothetical acid, HA, in water to produce an acidic solution, and the reaction of its conjugate base, A-, with water to produce a basic solution. Here, if we add up the two reactions, we can see that both HA and A minus appear on both sides of the equation. Therefore, they cancel out. Thus, we get the reaction of water molecules, producing hydronium ions and hydroxide ions, or the auto ionization of water. The equilibrium constant for the sum of two reactions is the product of the equilibrium constants for the individual reactions. Therefore, the product of Ka and Kb gives Kw. We can show that this is true by multiplying the Ka expression, by the Kb expression.
Here, we can see that both HA and A- cancel out, and we get hydronium concentration times hydroxide concentration which is equal to Kw. Also, if we operate both sides of the equation by negative log, we get negative log of Ka plus negative log of Kb equals negative log of Kw. Note that pKa is the negative log of Ka, and pKb is the negative log of Kb. Therefore, we can write that pKa plus pKb equal pKw. At 25 degrees Celsius, pKa plus pKb is equal to 14. I hope this video helped you review acids and bases. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.